growing. Hello everyone and welcome to a engineering Hang on, that's not supposed to be Hello everyone and welcome to a debut of the information shop um, the new part of Lights Up Lights Down channel where we are basically going to talk about and debunk any rumours um, towards new feats in the automotive industry and new things that are affecting MX-5 owners and basically the stuff that we're seeing that people are talking about a lot which needs addressing. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ollie uh, from the MX-5 Restorer and basically I am dispatch and parts manager but also I am a graduate engineer so we can get into the technical details and kind of talk about really what's behind all of the data and what is really um, going on with all of the topics that we address. So that's the aim of this is to basically be able to address things in depth so that you, the listener, can become basically the expert in the topic and it can be put to bed. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about the extremely prevalent topic of E10 fuel and all the misinformation that's going around with it because it's got people up in an absolute panic and it is honestly ridiculous. So. What we're going to talk about today is effectively all the false information, um, what E10 actually is on a technical level and why they're bringing it in and the advantages of it in normal cars and the logic behind it effectively. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it in the sense of the MX-5. So um, uh, the fuel system that is in the cars and basically address every single factor of it and debunk everything. So at the end of this video, you're going to be experts of, of the E10 fuel and you're not going to need to search for any more information. Um, you're basically going to have the whole encyclopedia inside your brain. So before we get into it, basically, I'd like to say that this is a combination of our knowledge from working on the cars and seeing them every single day and also some research knowledge as well. So basically, there are some sources involved um, and for everything and all information and that I use in this video and any video that I do, I will link the sources down in the description below so that you guys can have a look at it yourselves and basically see that the data is viable effectively. So E10 basically st stands for the ratio of petrol to ethanol that is basically provided to you at the pump. So currently we're having E5, so it's a 5% ratio of ethanol to petrol that you are putting inside of your car um, and effectively the reason why that they're putting ethanol inside of the petrol or combining it with is firstly because it's a renewable source a huge amount of it actually comes from Brazil and the States uh, from sugarcane farming so um, they are a huge supplier Europe itself is a very very small percentage of the supply for ethanol across the world so it's mainly imported into Europe and that is why in the UK we're actually very late to the game. So because we've had to import it all over, rather than actually having any produced inside of the country, we haven't had it really readily available. So countries like the Americas or Brazil or Australia even, have been actually using E10 fuel in higher concentrations even than E10 for many, many years, over a decade now actually, I believe. So the second reason they actually add ethanol to the fuel is basically because it can double up the oxygen content. Now, not only do you have oxygen coming through the air passages, you also have oxygen built into the molecules within the fuel, so you get a more complete burn. And obviously, the idea behind that is that with more complete combustion, you get less emissions, so that's where they're going with it. So let's talk about ethanol itself. It's a organic compound um, made up of carbon, hydrogen, and has a characteristic group with all the alcohols of the OH, which basically determines most of the chemistry within the molecule. What the oxygen actually does is it creates a polarity across the molecule. So basically, you've got one end which has got the mo oxygen molecule, which is highly negative, and we also have the rest of the molecule with all the carbon and the hydrogen which is extremely positive in general. So ethanol itself, one of the main things that I see, which is completely false by all the media, 
is that it's acidic. Wrong. Ethanol actually sits on the alkali side of the pH scale, so at 7.33, which is just over the neutral levels. So it is very, very much so a neutral compound almost, much like water, which at, sits at a pH of 7. So you're probably wondering, how could they just make that up? The answer actually is they haven't. There is some truth to it, but it doesn't come from the ethanol compound itself. What actually happens is because effectively ethanol is attracting more water, more of the contaminants within the fuel system and the environment can basically become a solution. The fuel then effectively becomes a good solvent for any salt, any remaining remnants of chemicals within the fuel system from manufacture that can turn the fuel acidic in itself. So as you can imagine, the first issue involved with having an acidic fuel system is it starts to see corrosion levels which are higher than that of a neutral compound. The second issue comes from where you can get a process called phase segregation, which is basically where the two components of the fuel, so the ethanol and the petrol, when sitting for a long period of time will actually split, so you'll get the different densities sitting on top of each other and therefore when you start up the car or run the car after a long period of time one it will have an increased amount of water in the ethanol zone and two it will also run a not correct fuel mixture you're probably thinking ollie you're telling me basically that this is going to be an issue and that it's going to corrode all of the inside of the walls of the fuel system not necessarily a publication done by Energy and Fuels basically really outlines how significant or how little this is of an issue. The total acidic numbers of all of the different fuels were also taken, so basically how acidic they had become with the addition of ethanol, and as you can see, E10 is significantly lower than the rest of the fuels. Although E10 isn't directly referenced in the results table, because of the lower total acid numbers, you're basically going to be looking at a much lower corrosion rate than any of these values here. The values of interest here are of course the steel values because the fuel lines are actually made out of mild steel. You can actually see a significant difference between the, the pure ethanol states and when they have water added. So it's a clear indicator to say if you are going to put E10 in your car, you really want to be driving it rather than letting the condensation build up over time. For reference, the scale we're using here for these values is micrometers, so one thousandth of a millimeter. The actual width of the average human hair is between 17 and 180 micrometers. So, is it really an issue? Maybe in 10 years time, when they've been subjected to this wear over a longer period of time, it might be an issue. But when the cars reach an age of 40 plus years old anyway, it'd be a great idea to replace these lines with fresh lines. Now that the metals for the actual fuel lines are covered, there's only one other component that you really need to worry about, and that is the rubbers within the seals and also the hoses. So ethanol is actually known to really degrade rubber in exactly the same way and for the same reasons as it does with metals. It's the fact that it pulls the water out from any surrounding conditions into the actual solution itself. Rubber or any kind of composite form of is obviously an organic compound and gets quite a lot of its properties from its hydration nature. So when you take away the water from the inside of these materials, effectively what you're going to do is you're going to dry out the rubber and you're going to cause cracking and any kind of brittle behaviour which you see on old sills which are quite typical. This actually happens with petrol on its own as it's actually a very very harsh chemical or material itself. So really what you need to be doing is no more than what you wish would already be doing when you're maintaining your fuel system. So I guess we should talk about MX-5 specifically, right? One of the reasons why everyone is very, very panicked with MX-5s is because of the, the blanket statement basically that the government has made over the issue, which says that anything pre to 2002 that is Mazda isn't necessarily compatible. The reason why you can see this and you can see through it is basically when you start to compare the actual parts on the car. So in my hand I have two injectors, so effectively one from an early 1.6 and one from a 2003 to 2005 SVT. So when you look at them directly, they are of course different shapes because they are different designs, but they share a lot of the common parts and those are the parts that you are the one you are actually going to need to worry about. The rubber o-rings, I don't know if you can see properly, but the rubber o-rings on both of the ends at this, which basically seal the injectors to the fuel rail, are both the same part. 
these are the one of the parts that the ethanol is supposed to corrode the end seals which seal the injector to the block also are exactly the same material so really there is no discrepancy between the pre recommendation from the government to after it fuel hoses on the other hand are nowhere near as black and white because mazda has kindly coded them differently and we don't know whether that's a material change or whether that's just a part change however as we have mentioned rubber before and because it is already happening to the rubber as they are a serviceable part i would say that the ethanol will make no difference to the actual rubber itself like everything that is indeed serviceable it, they will need replacing eventually but the actual rate in which they decay will not be any different to what they were before with E5 fuel wares. The 5% ethanol change really won't affect much at all. To actually come to buy new hoses for your car, it's really easy to just get direct E10 compatible hosing. Um, both ends inside of the engine bay and also at the fuel pump side are just push on. So really the only important thing is that you get the right diameter and you double check for that E10 resistance. Of course, the other part of the fuel system is the actual tank itself. With that, really it comes down to using the car. If cars sit for a long period of time, even with E5 fuel, there is a condensation buildup within the fuel as petrol does go bad over time. And we have seen previous issues of rust within fuel tanks. However, E10 fuel really won't make a difference to this and it will keep it at the same rate. The idea really that you want to keep in mind and to take away from this is that effectively you need to drive your car. By driving your car you will eliminate those vapours as you'll be flushing the fuel through and also you'll be getting a heat cycle going through the car as well to evaporate that water off. The last thing to really address is the fuel pump assembly itself which sits inside of the tank. The pump which is not going to be an issue with E10 at all. They fail quite regularly on older cars anyway so they do have a use life and they do have an expiry time basically um, so hypothetically even if ethanol was to damage them more you will be replacing it in your car at some point anyway but as we know ethanol in this concentration is not going to cause any extra premature wear the actual assembly is mild still so all the piping um, this unit has been in a breaker car for over 20 years now and you can see there's absolutely no rust still on it. So the corrosion rate for that, even sitting in E5, which has some kind of moisture and in a car that's sitting for a period of time as well as it was a breaker, um, there is little to none, no corrosion at all on the system. With the fuel tank, it is also possible if you wanted to, to take it out of the car and have it lined. With that again, because of E10 not being particularly corrosive in any sense, more than E5 fuel I would say is completely unnecessary. So I personally wouldn't go down that route. I think that might be the whole system. So let's sum up basically what we've talked about and found in this video. We've seen firsthand by experimental data that E10 will not cause a significant corrosion rate on any form of metals. Even when there is some water saturation inside of the fuel, the corrosion rate is still very, very low. We've seen also that the government statement doesn't really take into account Mazda or MX-5 cars specifically. What they've done is they've thrown down a blanket statement to cover all cars so that if there is a problem, they can accept no liability. We've seen and talked about how rubber seals and anything within the fuel system does decay with petrol use as E5, not just with E10. So they are serviceable parts anyway. So E10 will actually make very, very little difference to this surface life. Rubber and any form of will naturally dehydrate even in the sun. So really seals are something that you're going to need to replace regardless of E10 fuel. The decay rate associated with E10 fuel over E5 is completely negligible. We've also looked at each component of the MX-5 fuel system, um, especially the early ones as they are extremely simple and there is only a couple of components anyway. But we've looked at the system and each component and basically identified areas which should be checked or should basically be identified as a higher risk area. The final thing to really address is will you see reduced performance from using E10 fuel? The fact is with E10 the octane rating is maintaining the same value so we'll do another complete video on octane rating but basically that is the fuel's resistance to knock so for your standard normal 
naturally aspirated MX-5, it really isn't an issue. Basically for the forced induction guys, maybe it's a little bit more complicated because you'll basically have an effect or the E10 will have a slight, very, very slight effect on your map. For 95% of builds out there, it should be absolutely fine if you're running medium to high or medium low power. If you're making 300 wheel horsepower plus, potentially it could be time to go revisit the dyno just to check everything is okay. It's also worth noting that you will see a very, very slightly worse fuel economy in all MX-5s across the board when using this kind of fuel. That is because in the actual ethanol itself, there is less energy content within the burn or when you go through a combustion cycle than there is with pure petrol. On paper, it will be around a 1-3% to reduction in fuel economy. So really, what is the conclusion for you guys to take away from this video? Apart from now exactly knowing what is going on within your fuel system and what parts it will affect, you should just note that absolutely nothing will really change. And to be honest with you, the real proof of that is the fact that America and other countries around the world have been running it for years with absolutely no problems at all. I've been talking for a long time. But yeah, that's all I've got for you today. So if you guys enjoyed the video or got something out of it, leave us a like, let us know what you'd like to see, um, as hopefully we'll be doing more of these videos. But yeah, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.